So I just hit a hundred subscribers and to celebrate I'm going to be releasing the long awaited thumbnail tutorial. Keep in mind that you will need Photoshop and Reaper Mod or else this won't work for you. It's a huge shout out to Loud Beast Gaming for teaching me a lot of things I know and basically letting me plagiarize I mean take inspiration from his thumbnail design. All that aside, let's get straight into the video. Alright, so the first thing you need to make sure of is that you are on Badline Client. You can use Forge, but I don't really like using Forge in Replay Mode. So what you want to do is you want to get some sort of map download, either like a Bedwars map or like a Jules Lobby. I will have a few links to Jules Lobbies and Bedwars maps in the description. And then basically all you need to do is so I'd go into your inventory and get like a Diamond Sword out. By the way, for those that are wondering, this pack is Midnight 16X by Lucian 2 XG. And what I'll do is so you press P to start the recording. Then you see it shows it in the top right. And then what I like to do is I sort of just find a random direction to run. I don't jump or anything because it doesn't kind of kills you much, especially if you've got a thumbnail like where you're going to be hitting the person. First, what you want to do is you're going to run around, do some circles, probably try to swim in a straight line as well. Just do a couple of directions, find one that works for you. Because if you're looking for a straight line one, you don't really want to be moving around. So just do this a little bit. Now I think I've got more than enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change skin and I'll be right back. Right, so I'm back and I've changed skin to Dolphy's skin because I'm making a video with him very soon. Um, and basically, just for those that are wondering why I changed skin. If you want to have a thumbnail with multiple people, you could use like an NPC mod or something. But I personally just changed my skin and get two different poses. Now what I'll actually do is I'll leave this and I'll go to... I've got a single player world somewhere. I'll see if I can find it. And what I really quickly like to do is slash game rule do mob spawning false and that stops all the slimes and stuff from spawning and then just do slash kill at e twice because it gets rid of if you want to do this a couple of times because of slimes it's the way they multiply um so just do this until it says it stopped killing everything so what i'll usually do is i'll get like some random blocks it doesn't really matter just get some blocks and then pile up quite high get to about this height and then what i'll do is get rid of those blocks and i'll get like a diamond sword again or maybe an iron sword but i think i'll just stick with the diamond one the best all you've got to do is you've just got to make sure you're not sprinting either just to make sure you're sort of regularly walking because otherwise it kind of makes it look like you're not actually being hit then what i do is so you press p to record again and then you kind of just walk off and start hitting and then hopefully that was good. And then what you need to do now is you go save and quit with a replay viewer. Now we'll get now we've the two replay files here and here. So what I'll do is make sure you're not in um first person like the wrong perspective, but then change your FOV all the way to the minimum. Probably want to turn the speed down and then sort of wait until you jump off. And once you kind of get to a point, just sort of find one because I want to have an image of my player coming from the side. So I'm gonna look for a, sort of a shot like that. I honestly think this already looks really nice, so I might use this. So you press F1 and then I'm gonna kind of get a nice sort of look on the player. I think that kind of angle looks quite nice. So then just press F2. You don't need to get a second screenshot for this one because literally all you need is the player. Now I'm going to be right back after I've changed my skin back. Right, so I'm back and I've changed my skin. Now all I'm going to do is go to replay viewer and then go to the one that's this one's a bit longer. Um, you double click it and then you want to double pressing P just so you can kind of get your bearings. Again, turn the speed down and then make sure your FOV is proper. I'm actually going to turn the speed up until I get to the point where I start to move. Like that's already a pretty good shot. But I want to make sure it looks like I'm hitting. Oh, I've, but I'm still going too fast. And that's already quite good, but it should. I'm just gonna see if I can get one that looks not. That honestly does look. That honestly, I'm actually really happy with that angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'll go to the player, get a get a look, nice little angle. Sometimes what I'll actually do really quickly is I'll go to escape and I'll open up my file explorer. I'll drag this into my um, second screen. Sometimes this does this feels a bit weird, but all it does is go to screenshots. And then I'll actually um, double click this so I can get a rough idea of where the angle needs to be. So now I've got a rough idea that I need my player looking sort of upward and sort of that way. And I'll see if I can find a shot like that. This is actually a really nice angle already. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to press F2. Then I'm going to press B. I'm going to click this eye icon. I'm going to press F2 again to take another screenshot. And that's literally everything I need to get done in Minecraft. And that Photoshop thing I opened just before, um, I can I can literally just use that. I'll go back to my file or I'm going to drag these two shots in as well. So you can just click this and then click it, click off. And now, first thing I want to get dotted real quickly is get rid of that lock icon if that's appear, that appears. I'm going to go to the polygonal lateral tool, and you just don't hold that and then drag it there if it doesn't appear. And I'm going to trace over this character. One thing I want to say as well is usually you're a lot better to sort of be a bit too far inside than outside because if you're too far on the outside, you capture all the background and then once you're adding effects to the background, um, it just doesn't fit in that well. Um, but as well as generally for the most part, when you're doing things with the player, right, because all the edges are perfectly straight anyway and it's not as choppy as it is in the screenshot, you really don't notice it when there's a mistake as well as the fact that the thumbnails are a lot smaller. So one quick tip as well is when you're Doing this, it's often hard to move the mouse to the side of the screen. Press space, and then you can drag it around, and then let go of space to carry on doing this. It makes it a lot easier to um, navigate the me menu. 
really if you can just sort of in when you're tracing players especially like the sort of the side character you can kind of skip over a lot of the little details and now you right click layer via copy and you can delete this bottom layer and i think this angle does look quite nice i'm and basically i'm going to scale him up and rotate him a bit and hopefully get something that works now that honestly that already does look really nice so what i'm going to do with quickly is i'm going to go to this player go back to my polygonal lasso tool and i'm just going to really quickly trace him over as well Right here, sometimes if you want, you can ignore the cape, but issue is, is for in on this angle, the cape takes off a huge amount of the player, so you you, you can you, you're probably best just to keep it in. But if it's in an angle where it's really not noticeable, if you cut it out, and uh, then you can cut it out if you want to. I just don't. Now again, just sort of layer via copy, and you can delete this layer too. Now all I've got three separate layers, and this means this helps a lot. And one other thing as well is you go to here, and you press the magic wand tool, long hold it, and go to magic wand tool. Then you have to click this, and then I will try and get tolerance for like out of funny number, I guess. Click off and just sort of until it fully selects all that. Then right click and click similar, and that'll click all these little things here. You can delete that. Uh, sometimes it will say that. If it does that, you have to right click and press rasterize layer. Now press delete again. Now I have no no back no sky and what i'll do is i'll go here and i've got a sky screenshot and the link this will be in the description it's a plain blue sky what i'll do with quickly though is i will saturate it like that until it's quite vibrant and i'll drag this below the background uh it's fine as it is i could i'll probably just move it to the point where it's centered again there there we go now it takes up everything and this is already looking pretty decent we've got the angles right and stuff now what we want to do is i'm gonna actually start adding effect for him i'm gonna go and press this layer style here and already this looks quite strong so what i'll do is i'll double click it and i'll show you the settings for this layer style first so there's this this is the inner glow this is the gradient overlay and this is the drop shadow for anyone who likes it looking like that but I think it's quite strong, so I'm going to turn down the opacity on this quite a good bit. And for the inner glow, I'm going to turn down the choke, really. I'm going to kind of have it quite a bit stronger and make it more vibrant. And for drop shadow, I think the drop shadow just needs to be less strong. And that already looked quite nice. Already, that looks really good. Uh, what I'll do as well, though, is you need a color overlay for, for this one because he's being hit, right? So you need to click this color overlay. And you change this to, like, bright red. You can just the blend mode overlay. Now you want to make this around 50%. Now, basically, you do the same thing for your player, but this time you don't add the color overlay. So you click the layer with your player on and then you click this uh, again it's quite strong so what i'll do is i'll turn down some of the settings make this look less i'll turn that down a bit then make this quite a bit more while i turn it doing that and the drop shadow i might actually get rid of that and make this a bit better like that now this already looks really really clean there's a lot you can still do to it though so firstly i'm going to go to the player and i'm going to control u i'm going to saturate it by doing this i'm just saying that makes it look a lot nicer now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go to my player i'm gonna again saturate my player not a huge amount though just a little bit or just to there to the point where the skin starts to look lightly red and that is probably the thing that adds the most to me for me so i'll add a layer above my player and i'll go press b open brush tool and then i'll change the size to sort of 350 and then mode Mitchell mode is just normal and color is white now what i'll do then is you'll sort of see is remember that Mitchell to make hardness zero is you kind of click a bit and change the blend mode to overlay and it kind of creates this like nice highlight so i sort of do this along the highlights of the player where i want the light to be and i actually make the same thing over him this time i'll make it a bit of a reddish color blend mode overlay capacity flow what i'll just sort of do is i'll add this along in case kind of that sort of spreads the redness of him around and i think that just makes it look a lot better that's something else i like to do is i will go to this layer i'll control j to duplicate it and on this bottom one hide the effect and then go to filter blur gallery path blur now what i'll do so if it shows up with this arrow just press continue it doesn't matter you just sort of click near the middle and just sort of drag it like that now you can see there is a slight blur but it doesn't look that good and it's also not going in any one direction so where it's a centered blur click that it starts going in one direction and start will stretch that out then also want to turn the taper to like 20 percent that's sort of what i keep it as and that creates this nice sort of looking effect so it makes it look like the player is actually moving somewhere and being hit away now i'll actually make the same for my player moving into um, the doll eye skin so sort of one of the things if, if this looks a bit too transparent just press ctrl and j and it makes it a little bit stronger i wouldn't do more than two layers though i'll do the same for my player ctrl j and on the bottom one add the effect filter low gallery path blur drag it sort of that way a centered blur paper 20 percent and then sort of turn the speed up until i've got one that i like the look of your centered blur is off what's it doing oh it's this bit here 
then what I want to do is I want to work on the background but before we do that click the layer that your player is on and then click the other one and press ctrl and g and do the same one for this this and this make sure to press shift when you want to click multiple layers and then press ctrl g it just makes two groups and it makes it a lot more easy to control now go to this layer oh now go to this layer press ctrl and u and saturate it a good amount like that now you can add some like little details here and there just based on what you want to do so what i think i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go here and i'm gonna make a white thing so i'm just gonna go over make a new layer i'm gonna brighten some parts i think need brightening and darken parts that need darkening big blend mode overlay i'm gonna actually make the ground below me sort of brighter gives me a bit more kind of glow and then i'm also gonna add some shadows because you see here there's this big bit that needs a shadow and it doesn't actually have a shadow uh, so i'm gonna not it doesn't need a huge amount or anything but blend mode overlay you no know, i don't want it to be on the same layer because it's not too dark so make a new layer we'll drag it there blend mode overlay and then opacity sort of turn down this opacity a bit and just sort of darken like that sort of go underneath all these little bits but there's a big one here so there's, oh, there's also some bits that need brightening so what i'll go and do is i'll make this white sort of go over around the top like that either so i think that just makes it look a little bit nicer and have more realism to it right, so I was, I was going to find my own particle thing and i figured i could use this as an opportunity to redo my play and get a better angle because at the end of the day in thumbnails if something doesn't look right or feel right to you you can always redo it because there's nothing hurting you it just means it takes a bit longer now i've got my um player my particle and this i'll have a download to it in the description shout out to loud beast gaming for making it that's what i'll do so i'll kind of make sure this is all above the um other stuff i need to make sure this is above him but basically you just go and drag this piece by piece layer by layer above each one until eventually you get there but yeah you could just sort of drag this under maybe make a new group afterwards just have this on top of group two and now what i'll do then is i'll just drag, i'll you don't need a huge amount but control j every time and just sort of drag some ones around maybe slightly scale it up have a couple different sizes and rotations and stuff and it just makes the thumbnail look really nice but some of these do want to be below um the player because otherwise it doesn't look quite right uh, you can also just hold alt and drag them around but that that's what I'm, I'm doing now is you just go here find one drag it and then boom i think that's already enough particles for this now i'm going to work on the background a bit more because i'm not doing a huge amount with that so what I'm going to do is go all the way to the bottom of this list. I might make this a bit taller just so you guys can see. Then I'll go here. The main effect that I need that I use is a blur. But I won't use a Gaussian blur. Because if you see, when I sort of put it here, it, it doesn't feel very immersive. It kind of just feels like it's just on a background. So undo this blur. And what I do is filter, blur gallery, and tilt the shift. Now what this does, right? So this kind of makes it so there's a focus part. And it gradually blurs its way out. Then I'm going to I'm gonna drag this sort of down here. I'm going to rotate it. If I can figure out where the rotate area is. There. I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to stretch this bottom piece out and stretch this top piece out like this and press ok as you can tell it kind of like gradually fades out as almost as if it's the further out you get the more blurred it is honestly that just makes it look really nice for me i might actually redo it because it's not quite strong enough and that honestly does look a lot better now that the full thing's blurred instead of parts of it that are and on and now basically everything in this is done but i do want to make two other changes before i add the text so firstly i'm going to add an effect to this you double click the background sometimes if it does that you have to click another place and then you go to click this in a shadow and just color to white Blend mode overlay and then i change the distance you have to make sure this is 90 degrees just straight up and make the distance like that and make it quite big also quite strong like that we change the choke a little bit just so it's more noticeable you can kind of tell it kind of create i used to do this like border but it doesn't look that nice so i kind of replaced it with this sort of look it's like a thought of a border but quite small it's sometimes just drag this down so that you don't see the bottom part and that kind of gives this nice little pop to the thumbnail and then the last thing i'm going to do after all this is i'm going to add the text you go right right to the top you want to add a new layer actually no you don't need to add a new layer so you delete it press t what i like to use is uni sounds heavy there will be a link to it in the description and because i'm this is going to be a dual video i'm just gonna have the word dual i'm going to make this well we make sure to make it font size not text size because having text size it has copy edges and but having font size it makes it all smooth let's start with like 200 and see if that's too big might make that thousand i'll sort of drag this near the middle that's a bit small so i'm gonna keep dragging this down until i figure it out i think 750 looks quite nice so i'm gonna put this in the perfectly in the middle now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna drag this below all the group now what i need to do as well i actually want to make a group of particles just so that uh, i can see what i'm doing more easily now you can tell there's the text that says jewel but you can't see it too well so i'm actually first i'm gonna move all my things in group one down what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna move this sort of down there might move this over the u like this and then this player is going to be i shouldn't maybe i want to move it the other way around that might be the better way so you just got to play around with it eventually you'll figure out what you're doing and then same i think this one so i'm going to have to a point where it's not as obstructive and now you can kind of vaguely see the word jewel it's not perfect but what you'll do there's an effect that you add afterwards so you go to jewel i'll add my text layer that looks quite nice but i want to make this shadow better i'll show you the settings again as well so in a, in a glow outer glow 
drop shadow and drop shadow and i go to this drop shadow and i'm just going to make this further down we're going to make change to that capacity and i'm going to make this a nice gray color i should make that stronger though now you go now we've got this sort of tech layer. you can kind of see it but you can't fully so what i'm going to do is duplicate this and i'm going to drag this all the way up uh, because what this lets you do right is this lets you see this text on top and then i've got a cool effect that again um the loud beast has taught me and this lets you see the text without it being obstructed i drag this above everything and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to click this and i'm going to Turn all the fill opacity to zero. I'm going to turn off all these effects. I'm going to give it a stroke. I'm going to make the stroke level three. And I'm going to make the color white. And he actually showed me to add a drop shadow. So that's what I'm going to do. And you, can, and you can kind of tell it has this really nice effect. You can still see the word jewel, but now it's like an outline and i think this looks really really clean yeah, but one thing is like this you don't have to do everything i said in this tutorial you can experiment with the settings and stuff this is obviously this is what you think works uh, but if you enjoyed leave a like and subscribe if you think this helped you tell me in the comments it really really helps me out anyway thanks for watching and goodbye